Awareness, the final frontier. These are the explorations of Jonathan Robinson and Brian Tom O'Connor. Their continuing mission, to discover fresh new paths to the mystery within. To seek out new joys and new methods of awakening. To boldly go into the heart of expanded consciousness. This is Awareness Explorers. Welcome, welcome, Awareness Explorers, whether it be morning, afternoon, evening, or the middle of the night. We are here to explore, inspire, and hopefully help you awaken. I am Jonathan Robinson, and I am with my trusty co-host, Ryan Tom O'Connor. And the topic of today is one that I think has a lot to it, a lot of meat to it, a lot of good stuff. It's the story in your head, how we get lost in our stories, how to get out of them, what they are, how to free ourselves, all kinds of stuff around stories. That's the story that we're doing today. So, Brian, when I talk about stories and the story in our head and what to do about it, what shows up as a story in your head? Well, the first thing that popped into my head when you gave that introduction was so funny because you said, welcome everybody, whether it's the middle of the day uh, or um, the middle of the night, we want to awaken you. <laughs> I thought, well, if you're talking about the mundane uh, meaning of awaken, we don't want to wake you up in the middle of the night. But we're not talking about the mundane version. We're talking about the real thing, awakening to your true nature. And your story about your life and the story about your experience and yourself and what you're going through that you spin endlessly is, I think, one of the veils to your true nature. So I'm really glad that uh, that we're exploring that today. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot to it because I've really looked at this topic. And uh, one story I have going before I forget is a story of gratitude for all our Patreon supporters. It always feels good to be supported, and, and that's a story. So if you're interested in getting a bunch of free stuff for as little as a dollar a month, go to patreon.com forward slash awareness explorers, and it's all in there for you. And thank you for all our supporters. Um, so another story I have going in my head is that stories are the main thing that keep us from awakening. And you know, we have stories about ourselves, you know, I'm a good person, I'm a bad person, I'm a failure, I'm I'm a success, whatever that is. Then we have stories about each other, like that person, you know, all based on the past, you know, they're likable, they're funny, they're uh, capable, or whatever our stories are about other people. Then we have our stories about the world, you know, the world's going to crap, or the world is doing great, or it's the best time in human history, or whatever it is. Uh, everybody has different stories. And then we have the story about the current situation that we are in. Like, it's a good day, it's a bad day, um, a failure in relationships, I'm great in relationships, I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm, I'm sick, I'm well, you know, how our day is going. So we have all these layers of stories all of which we get involved in. And the only commonality between our and other people's stories is that we tend to get fully lost in them and believe them and have a hard time seeing outside of them, even though they are completely a concoction in our own mind. And outside of your mind, that story does not exist. <laughs> That's absolutely right. I sometimes talk about real reality versus virtual reality. Real reality is just what's happening right here, right now, without the filter of the story, without the the, the sort of conceptual weaving uh, that we um, that we go through to to describe what's happening to ourselves. Yeah, and that's always pretty simple. You know, it's kind of like looking at a still photograph in a movie, you know, at one frame. There's not much going on. You know, it's just like you're there. But the movie is there to take you away and get you believing in all kinds of stuff. And we kind of have this movie going, and we forget that the movie is made up of thousands of still frames each day that 
if we just watched or noticed that still frame, the still moment of now, that we could feel peaceful and we could be aware that we are awareness. But we get so lost in our stories that that is obscured. And uh, I don't know, did you ever read the book uh, Sapiens by, uh, he has a hard name, something like Noval Harari? <laughs> um, I have begun that, but I have not finished it. It is fascinating, though. I'm part way through yeah, he basically, it. He basically says that what makes human beings different from all other animals is the fact that we get very involved in stories and that we have shared stories. So we have a shared story that green pieces of paper or whatever pieces of paper or plastic are valuable. And because everybody shares that story, we can do things with money that dolphins can't do. And this ability to share stories is a great ability, and it's also a great burden. That's right. It is a great burden, but you, but it is a great ability, and there are, of course, obviously, for every mental function, there are uses, practical, everyday uses. We want to, you know, we want to create a little story about um, what's the best way to do something, like, like schedule an airplane ticket or something like that. Um, we're not talking about the practical stuff. We're talking about, particularly, I find, what happens after you're experiencing some sort of emotion that you'd rather not be happening. That's the story that spins. It says, hmm, he shouldn't have said that. She shouldn't have done that. Or, ah, oh, look at me. There goes my failing or my fault again. Or I'm angry at this. Or And that that keeps spinning, that's the story that veils our true nature of pure experiencing. Yes, and a lot of these stories have a negative slant to it, you know, and the reason I think is because a hundred thousand years ago, the person that, you know, saw a bush move and said, oh, how beautiful that is, they um, didn't necessarily pass down their genes because sometimes that moving bush was uh, people from the next village being camouflaged who would then club them to death. So it had more value if our stories were protective if our stories were focusing on possible bad scenarios, and therefore the mind is geared generally towards possible bad scenarios that at one time had survival value, and now they just kind of make us feel bad. And we are descendants of 100,000 years of people having paranoid bad stories in their head and believing them. And now those stories lead to heart attacks and depression and all these other things that we don't seem to be able to get free of until we uh, either go to a lot of psychotherapy or do awakening practices. What do you think? Well, I think you're right. And I think that it's important to notice what triggers these stories. If, as you say, it's triggered by some real and present danger that you need to know about, and you need to know that, for instance, red and black stripes moving through the jungle might be something to avoid. Um, if that's the kind of story you're talking about, that's fine. But what happens is, is when we don't like our present experience, particularly our present emotional experience, the story is all about the strategies that we employ to prevent that feeling from happening again or to make it go away now. Like, hmm, if so-and-so acted in such a way instead of the way they did, then I may not feel this way. And that part of it is very safe for you to assume it's not true. Yeah. And one of the techniques for... Dealing with story is, uh, you know, Byron Katie has this question, is it true or can I know for sure that it's true? And just asking that question gets a little bit of doubt in there. Like, well, I don't really know. I know I have a, a story creating mind and maybe some of these stories really uh, are totally false or maybe not totally true. And that's a beginning. Another thing that I sometimes ask is just 
the question, what story am I running now? Right. That brings awareness to it. Like, oh, there's always a, some story going on in the head. It's just a matter of how much am I lost in it. And, and to bring it to awareness is the first step in perhaps not totally identifying with it. And then the next question I sometimes ask is, can I step out of it just for a moment? You know, like I'm I'm in this suit, uh, this constricted story. Can I just like put it on the shelf for a minute and see that it's actually a beautiful day and there's nothing really wrong other than the story I got going? <laughs> That's right. I think those are really, really good techniques. And you're right that you want to sort of disidentify with a story. A good way of, 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 of doing that is when the voice in your head is telling you a story, ask, well, Who's it talking to? <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't tried that. Yeah, who's it talking to? It's talking to my awareness, I guess. Right. It's talking to you, awareness, not you, the individual body-mind. Right, right. Yeah, I always found it interesting. You know, we obviously love stories. That's why we watch TV, dramas, and movies. And I always found it fascinating that some people actually pay money to go to things like a horror movie. You know, that we're entertained by our stories and people are entertained by different stories. Some people are entertained and they love their poor me story. You know, if you talk to them, you know that you're going to get a poor me story right. or uh, or a horror story or a right. a romantic comedy story. You know, it's funny. We, we pay money for these movies, but in our lives, we also kind of uh, buy a ticket to enjoy the story. That's right. Well, I just came up with a theory about that. Just a second. Yeah. Okay. So you go to some horror movie and you're watching it and you're, you're, you're scared. You're frightened. You're feeling this intense emotion. And then it's over. It's released. You realize it was only a story. It was only mm -hmm. a movie. That's like a little microcosm of the awakening experience. Oh, wow. I really like that. That's a whole, a whole new way of looking at <laughs> horror movies. That's right. And, and um, and it really is that sense of relief. Oh, just like when you wake up from a bad dream, you say, oh, thank God that wasn't real. And, yeah. and there's that feeling of relief and uh, peace and disidentification. And we're here to do that with whatever story we have. So you don't have to pay so much for these movies or these uh, deal with these bad dreams. Yep. There's a couple of stories I like around how we create stories in our head. I think one of them I may have mentioned before, but it's a good story. This uh, guy goes up to a guru, uh, arrogant man, and in a voice accustomed to instant obedience, he says, if you're so wise, teach me a lesson about heaven and hell. And the guru looks at him and says, I couldn't teach you anything. You're you're ugly. You're disgusting. You smell bad. You don't have a caring bone in your entire body. Just get out of my sight and stop wasting my time. Well, this gets the arrogant man all upset. He shakes with rage. He gets ready to punch the guru. And the guru says, that's hell. Well, the man realized this guru was willing to get beaten up to teach him this lesson about hell. He unclenches his fists and he bows in deep gratitude to the guru. And the guru says, and that's heaven. What a beautiful story. Now, what I like about this story is it shows that we really create our own heaven and our own hell through the story of what we interpret about reality. The first time he created a moment of hell by how he interpreted this person. And then a moment later, he created a moment of heaven by a different interpretation. So there's not only disidentifying with stories, but it's also how you interpret the story or what it means to you when it's going through your head that has a big influence on how we feel during the day. Exactly. And the other thing about that story is that what it triggered in this guy was this defensiveness of his own ego. I'm not mm -hmm. ugly and smell bad and, and, and awful. And, and, and that defensiveness of the ego is 
the illusory separate self that spiritual teachers talk about. Mm -hmm. And that's kept alive by spinning the story about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's some traditions, whether it be non-dual or other things, that, or simulation theory, that says everything here is a simulation, or everything here is, is our interpretation. Uh, there's a guy named Donald Hoffman who uh, has a TED talk that's very interesting. He says, we have no clue whatsoever what is going on or what reality is. All we know is what helps us to survive. But reality, according to physicists, if you took out all the empty space in our body, we'd be, be the size of a period at the end of a sentence. Mm -hmm. Everything else is empty space. You know, we're 99.99997% empty space. Well, the fact that we even have bodies in a way is a story, or the fact that we know what's going on at all is a story. And having that humility can be helpful in being a little bit suspicious of whatever the mind is throwing at you at the latest moment and and kind of helping you see, well, I don't really know what's going on, but the story I'm running now is this. I don't really know what's going on, but uh, the way I'm interpreting this is this. And with that type of way of looking at the world, the the background of the one thing that doesn't change, our awareness, our true nature, becomes more relevant because everything else is just kind of made up. That's right. It is. And I'm glad you brought up Donald Hoffman because I think he's a very interesting writer and thinker. Uh, and he says that basically we have evolved not to see reality as it is. Basically, we our mind is just made up of little like icons on your on your home screen on your computer that represent some deeper reality and all we know are the are the icons and um or and you could say the same thing about the stories that we weave about the world they're just our little temporary representations of reality but they're not reality and when we can when we can see through them, we, we start to, to see reality. And reality is a lot more, a lot more peaceful than our stories. Yeah. Because our stories are usually about how to change our experience, how to fix things, how to make things different from the way they are. And, and the peace of awareness is that which allows everything to be as it is and is okay and is not arguing with reality. Right. We always have, to some extent, a slight argument going with reality. And my favorite Byron Katie statement is, when you argue with reality, you lose, but just 100% of the time. Yes. And a lot of our stories are habitual, meaning... Most people really only have like five or six common stories and they just play them over and over again. Just like, you know, if you go to the movies, there's only a few stories in the movies. You know, uh, someone's having a hard time. They have a challenge. They overcome the challenge and then they're the hero. You know, that that's like the one story. There's there's almost no other story, but it almost seems like we we feel that way with ourselves that. Oh, I'm having to face a challenge. It's kind of unfair. Uh, things are working against me. Can I, can I change things in a way so that eventually I end up on top? And, you know, reality is not like that. Reality comes to us moment to moment. It doesn't have a story. It doesn't, um, uh, have this ongoing thing happening like a, a movie. It's just, one moment, another moment, and everything else is our interpretation. And that's why I like many times a day, just kind of asking myself, can I see through the current story? Can I see through Jonathan's current story? And once I knew that I only had like five good stories, and you know, it was just like, oh, yeah, that's that story. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that one. 
Oh yeah, my old friend the 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 self pity story, or my old friend the uh, uh, relationship story, or whatever it is. And one of the things I've liked about becoming more self aware is that it's easier to disidentify because the mind isn't that creative. It, it just always comes up with the same stuff from your childhood or whatever it is. And once you can laugh at that um, or be entertained by that, you don't actually have to pay for movies because there's always some movie going on. <laughs> That's right. And also the interesting thing about stories is that there's a, there's a one nuance to it that I find really interesting that I learned from a guided meditation of Adyashanti's called Working with Negative Emotions. And mm -hmm. in this, and, and the, the, the concept is that you're not trying to get rid of emotions, you're trying to allow them, you're trying to experience them fully without resistance so that they can come in and leave, so that you're more porous. They come, they go, they don't spin around forever in this little eddy that happens when you try to prevent them. And in this technique, though, he uses story as a catalyst. He says, so let's say you have an emotion that you don't want. There's probably mm -hmm. a story around that emotion. Yeah. Go into the story until the emotion starts to become more intense. So you're stirring up the emotion with the story. And then once you've stirred up the emotion with a story, then you drop the story. You put it aside and you focus uh -huh. on how that emotion feels right now in your body without words to describe it, without concept, without story, and see if you can allow it to be there. It's like using a thorn to remove another thorn. And then once it's removed, you you throw them both away. I like that. Of course, the challenge is, can you, once you've stirred up a story and it has a little bit of momentum, can you let go of it and just go into the sensations? Right, exactly. And that's a good question. And I was about to ask you that. How do you do that? Well, you have to be very deliberate and know that that's what you're doing. and get better at, I guess, developing the muscle in you that can say no to the story. Like, no, I'm not getting, you know, I'm not going back into my head to go uh, into how they wronged me or whatever the story mm -hmm. is. I'm just going to the sensations. It's like, you know, with a mantra, every time you start thinking other thoughts, you go back to the mantra. Every time you start thinking about your story, you go back to the sensations. But you have to kind of be willing or able to say, no, I'm not going with the story. No, thank you. Yep. You know, yep. And I, I, know, I, know, I know what you have to say. Thank you very much. You're very entertaining. You're very insistent. But for the next five minutes, I'm not listening to stories. I'm focusing on sensation. And that takes practice, I think. Absolutely. It's like Pamela Wilson used to always say, thank your mind for its opinion. But it's key to what you said. I think the key is you go back to sensation and that's something you feel in the body. You mm -hmm. sense, you see, what are my body sensations right now? Because when you're focused on your body sensations, it can only be here and now. And story is all about the past and all about the future in yeah. an attempt to change or get rid of what's happening now, but your body sensations are right here, right now. Focus on them without the story. I think that's the strongest and most useful technique. And the only other one is that disidentification being, well, who, who is hearing the story? Mm -hmm. Who's what, hearing in the what story? is the, in what is the story appearing is another way of saying it. Yeah. However works for you. Yeah. And, you know, we've given probably 10 methods in this particular podcast, and it's really up to people listening to say, okay, you know, a lot of these methods are five second methods, which are my favorite, you know, who's listening, what's it in, can I see through this story, what story am I running, all these different methods. And if one of these appeals to you, I encourage you to like, 
write it on a post-it note and just use it throughout the day. Because if you can get a little bit of freedom from your stories, you basically have altered the course of your life, you know, and, and uh, it's really a matter of sometimes one method works, sometimes another, but I think these are all great ideas. One thing that helped me to see through my stories was um, the Enneagram of all things. Are you familiar with the Enneagram? I am. You know, I, I'm a three on the Enneagram. And I saw that, gee, most of my stories are are based on what threes do. You know, that's one of nine personality types. And, and when they start to have less surprise, like they started to become more like a movie you've seen 10 times or 100 times, then I could not identify so much with the stories. And, and diff- the nine different personality types in the Enneagram each have a type of story or type of view that they habitually do. And you can learn about what your type is. You can Google Enneagram test, find out what type you are, and then see, oh, yeah, that's, I do tend to do that story a lot. And, and once you're on to yourself, once you're a little bit suspicious of yourself, it's easier to not take your story quite so seriously. Yeah, it really is. But the real trick is the story about, I think, the hardest one. Well, maybe not the hardest. Maybe the story about yourself is harder. But equally, at least equally hard as hard, is the story about how other people should be different and why the other people were wrong to make you feel the way you do and what they should do differently and what you should tell them in your mind and all of that. You know, that's, 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 that's really thorny. But I agree that once you look at them, you see the same pattern even to that story over and over again whenever yeah. you're upset with somebody. It's the same thing. And it's good and- to know we all have similar stories. I mean... Who listening does not ha- know that story? Oh, they done me wrong. I mean, it's like the the half the yes. songs in the world are about that. Yes, they done me wrong. They failed me. They insulted me. They don't want me. They don't love me. Um, uh, they're trying to get me to do something I don't want. It. All of that stuff. And I think what really happens when you start to look at it, and I would hope that this would happen to all our listeners at some point, you get really tired of the stories. You go, yeah. oh, okay, all right, I'm done. Uh, this is, uh, you know, forget about this. I'm d- I, this story has spun in my head so many times. I'm done with it. Yeah, having a little bit of humor or perspective, or sometimes I make fun of my stories. Oh, yeah, that story again. Yeah, and, you know, it's starting to get a little dull. You, yep. you, you need some new material, you know? <laughs> you, need, you need something fresh. You need some new material. You need something fresh. And the thing that's always fresh and always new is what's happening right now in your sensations without words to describe them in, in right now in present experience and the background of awareness. Mm-hmm. It sounds Absolutely. like a commercial. Sorry, but <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> and we sell it to you for free. That's right. But wait, there's more. <laughs> it's partly about story and how you can instantly get out of them yeah. by changing your relationship with them. One last thing, you know, when society's going through a lot of stuff, it's really easy to get stuck in the societal story. And, you know, the political story and a lot of people right. get very stuck in that. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be aware of the news and what's going on. But if certain stories infect you in a way that debilitate you, one thing to do is to try to not expose yourself to such stories. You know, uh, sometimes you may have to turn off the news so that you're not so subjected to a story that is kind of eating away at your peace. And I think that's a a way to sometimes deal with stories as well. Just be careful what you allow into your brain because all of those stories, whether it be a friend or the society or the news, can overwhelm your ability to find the peace within. 
Yes, and that's where I think that uh, Byron Katie's excellent technique can apply both to your own personal stories and what you believe about the world. Is it true? Mm -hmm. Can I absolutely know that it's true? When you get in the habit of asking that about every thought you have, every story you have, you start to awaken to the unreality of story. Right. And when you awaken to the unreality of story, you awaken to the reality that you are pure awareness, consciousness, peace, love, and compassion. And it's kind of like a, the great exchange. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to exchange all my negative emotions and stories and thoughts for great peace, compassion, and feeling at one with the universe. Uh, how much will that cost? Well, it doesn't cost anything, but it does take a lot of practice. <laughs> that is so brilliant. And the thing about it is we don't see, we don't get that that is the bargain of the universe because we yeah. think these stories are so valuable and they're not. The right. trade in is like you do that trade and you're really you're really coming out on the good side of that bargain. And one way to help yourself with the bargain is surround yourself with friends and family and the podcasts and books and methods that help in that way, because uh, we are kind of buried amongst many levels of stories and we need all the help we can get to, to experience what's always here right now, which is kind of a funny thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I hope that something we said helps you to put your story on the shelf for moments during the day and help you to realize that peace and compassion and love is who we are. And we're all kind of walking each other home, reminding each other of what is obvious, but sometimes difficult to see. Yes. Couldn't have said it better. And I hear you have a guided meditation to help with just that. I do. I do. And I think this is a very uh, powerful guided meditation. So if you can, take some time now and make yourself comfortable. If you can, close your eyes. Take a couple of deep breaths. I want you to become aware of any sense of a story you have going on in your head right now. It might be a story about your business or a relationship or your life. It might be a poor me story. It might be a gratitude story. But just become aware of the primary story that you're aware of that is the most easy for you to get in touch with in this moment. And as you become aware of any story that's running through your head, realize that it's just a story. It's a mental loop you have going on in your head. These stories we create are like a movie that we're in the middle of. And in actuality, a movie isn't real. As soon as you step outside of a movie you're watching, it loses its impact on you. In the same way, once you recognize that a story is just a story in your head, and it's not reality, you can be less impacted by it. So imagine you can take this movie you're in, this story you're in, and place it right now in a big box on a shelf near you. Imagine that now. This box will keep your story for safekeeping while you explore what's outside of the story running in your head. You, you can retrieve your story later on if you want, but for now, with that story freed from your head, there's a little more space in there. 
notice you may feel a little bit lighter or a little bit more free now that the story is safely locked away. And finally, there are stories that are so subtle or so always present that we don't realize that they're a story, mostly because it's like a fish in water. They're invisible to us. One of those stories is a story we have about time. The story we have about time is that we're on some kind of timeline that goes from the past to the future. However, in our direct experience, we're always just in the present moment, and the future is not guaranteed. So right now, imagine this story of moving through time, which we make up, is also lifted from you and drifts into the secure box for safekeeping. What's left is simply being here right now, with no past and no future. With no past or future, you experience an eternal stream of continuous now moments. So the story of time, as well as all the other stories you may have had in your head, are all safely and securely stored in this box on a shelf near you, freeing you to fully enter into the now stream. Even the story that you're a separate ego moving through time can all fall away. What's left is just awareness of now, awareness of sensations, and beingness. Thoughts and emotions may continue to drift by, but you gently let them go as you identify with the ocean of awareness rather than gain lost in the thoughts drifting by. You are the ocean of awareness. You are in an ocean of awareness. In the now stream you are in, you are aware of thoughts and sensations, but because you are no longer lost in their story that they sometimes create, they can slide off you like Teflon. Your thoughts or sensations or story no longer need to stick to you and cause any reaction. With no future, there's no need to know what anything means or no need to judge anything. In this now stream you're in, you can be totally innocent to experience each new feeling and sensation in a completely fresh way. Just allow everything to be exactly as it is, complete innocence to the thoughts, vibrations, and sensations that you're now experiencing. In this place of full acceptance and welcoming, there's a part of you that can fully expand and just be. So just be.
Enjoy the feeling of nothing to do, no problem to solve, no story to believe. Relax into the feeling of one moment after another of fresh, innocent awareness, like how a newborn experiences the world. Notice if you get lost in thoughts or story and just gently say, no, thank you, and come back to the now stream of sensations. In a moment, I'm going to have you very, very slowly open your eyes so you can experience the world with completely fresh, innocent eyes, free of any story about yourself or the world, like you just arrived here on planet Earth. Take your time to very, very slowly open your eyes as if for the first time. As you slowly begin to look around at the forms around you, see them free of any story. Begin to move your body like a newborn, as if moving for the first time, marveling at this body instrument you have control over. Notice if you have any story about your body that arises. And if so, say no thank you and just go back to seeing and sensing. Finally, when you're ready, Move very, very slowly into your life, maintaining your connection to awareness, seeing through whatever character you create, whatever stories you create, and let them pass through without getting involved in them like water off a duck's back. And instead, just go back to the present moment, the now moment of enjoying and opening fully to the sensations and experience of being fully alive. Enjoy the rest of your day. So, life outside a story can be a wonderful experience. Yes, just like it is right now. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how I can continue with this podcast after that. <laughs> that <You> was... <laughs> I do what? You look like you smoked a couple of doobies there, Brian. <laughs> oh, I feel pretty high. Uh, that was wonderful. That was one of the best uh, meditations ever. Uh, I thank you for that. Uh, really uh, went deep and uh, and I experienced it directly. It was great. Thank you so much. What a gift. Very welcome. You know, and stories aren't all bad. You know, I, I just created a story that I did a good job. That feels good. <laughs> as long as I don't get too attached to it, you know. Uh, so, you know, it's not that stories are bad. It's that our, our um, especially involvement and feeding 
of the same habitual negative stories right. which block the peace that's happening now yeah. is something to be very aware of. Right. And you're right. It's not that stories are good or bad. As a matter of fact, good and bad is a story. Oh, my gosh. You're right. It's just I felt, they're not, it's just I that they're not true. A story already. <laughs> None of which is true. Yeah. Yeah. Really and, good. And it goes well with our last podcast about beliefs. Yeah. And of course, they're related in some ways. And you know, we we need all these different angles to get free of these things that we get attached to. And if you like one of these podcasts, first of all, tell your friends, but also feel free to listen to them repeatedly, because sometimes it goes in deeper a second time. And a story I used to have is you only listen to things once. And then I say, well, why is that? You know, or I only see a movie I love once. Well, why is that? And once I stepped out of that story, I saw that sometimes I got greater value when I saw a movie a second time or read a book a second time or listened to a podcast a second time. So our stories can be pretty limiting and questioning them can be very expanding, even if it doesn't lead you immediately to pure awareness. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, how this is connected to the belief episode in our previous episode. And it's also connected to the pure conscious experience episode from before that. Or pure experiencing, I think we called it. Yeah. It's all connected. It's, it's all, all one. It's all connected. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. And... Thank you again, listeners, for joining us in this exploration. And feel free to email us. Check out all the other 70 guided meditations we have at the awarenessexplorers.com website under the heading Meditations. Tell your friends. And we have a lot of stuff on YouTube as well. So till next time, keep exploring. Keep exploring. Thank you for listening to Awareness Explorers. To learn more, you can check out our website at awarenessexplorers.com. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. We'd love it if you would post a review. And please share our link on Facebook and with family and friends. Because knowing yourself as awareness is the greatest gift you can give yourself or someone you love.